We'll start with uh, Psalm 1, and uh, Psalm 1, uh, actually, it is said the first 41 Psalms, are, in any case, are written by David, also other Psalms, but these, um, in any case. And what I, uh, what I want to do when I go over these uh, Psalms is um, make a small uh, schematic about structure of the psalm. Um, as I said in the introduction, the psalms are, are songs and uh, just like uh, we know uh, in, in contemporary songs, they have uh, verses, they have uh, usually a chorus that repeats, uh, maybe an intro and an outro, maybe a bridge, but there are specific recognizable sections in a song. And this is in most of the psalms, this is the same uh, the same uh, case as well and so it's uh, good to recognize that because it helps you to to read the psalm in a, in a more uh, understandable way and so i have done so with uh, this psalm uh, one as well and so the the, the layout of the these diagrams is uh, is all the time the same uh, the way i've set it up so you see uh, in the center this vertical row numbering the verses Above it in the circle, uh, number one means that it's Psalm 1, and below it says Aleph, which is also 1, so it's Psalm 1. And then you see on the left side, you see um, the, um, the general uh, division. In this case, there are two major parts. The first uh, half speaks of the path of the righteous, and the verses 4 and 5 of the path of the ungodly. And then verse 6 is uh, conclusion. And so, and then on the right side, you have more detailed what each verse, or maybe in other cases, groups of verses, uh, tell us. So you have directly an overview of the psalm, and um, that just helps you to, to read. So, um, we begin with the path of the, un of, sorry, the path of the righteous. This is what is said uh, in verses 1, 2, and 3. And we begin with verse 1. Verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So it speaks about the God-fearing, the righteous man. And it says that he is blessed. Now many of the, the Psalms of David begin and end with that word, blessed. Uh, at least it has the, that word in the first and in the last verse. It's not always so, but often. Um, the word used, that is translated here with blessed, is um, the word uh, ashre. And ashre has the idea of being happy, being content, fulfilled. And it comes from the root asher, Asha, Asha means straight, to be right. And, and so that explains right away something. It says that the righteous man is right with God. That is what is meant with the righteous man. He is right with God, but he's also a happy man. And um, this can also be any man. It says blessed is the man. It doesn't say the king or uh, the ruler or the judge, but the man, which means it can be anyone, any man or woman, obviously. There are no preconditions. Uh, there are no certain requirements. Anyone can be righteous if he chooses to be so. And of course, we know that righteousness can only be obtained through Jesus. Um, and I get to that as well. These verse, uh, this verse here, verse 1, describes in particular what a righteous man does not do. Sometimes it's more clear uh, to say what not to do than what to do. Um, what he does not do. His behavior is different from the ungodly because he is not involved with certain things. Um, it speaks of three things. The way he will not walk, 
the path he will not stand in and the seat he will not sit in. So it concerns the way he thinks, the way he behaves and to whom he belongs. So let look, let's look at these things. First of all, he walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now the counsel are the advices, the plans of the ungodly. Uh, the righteous man does not need them. He does not desire them. He's not interested in them. But in order to have that attitude, it means that the righteous man is able to discern the counsel of the ungodly. And that is where many fail. Uh, they do not even consider if uh, a counsel is godly or ungodly. Many hear advices, they hear theories, they hear plans, and they just follow them without considering whether they are godly or ungodly. But the righteous man, he knows where to find true godly counsel, namely in God's words. In Psalm 119 verse 24 it says, Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. The word of God, that is our counselor. So that's the first thing. The second thing it says about the righteous man is that he stands not in the way of sinners. Sinners, they have a path where they stand. And the righteous man knows he does not belong on that path. A path or a way is uh, like a road that leads somewhere in a certain direction. And the righteous man is not traveling in the same direction as the sinner. He takes a road that is less traveled. He takes a road that leads to blessing, that leads to happiness. He takes a road that leads to eternal life. Jesus uses that metaphor uh, in uh, Matthew 7, uh, where he says in verse 14, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. It's a way that leads somewhere, and the righteous man is on that path. He's not on the way of the sinners. God shows that path to us. He shows a path that is good to follow. In Psalm 16, verse 11, it says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. God will show the path. And you see uh, two keywords here. Fullness of joy, joy, and pleasures. And this is the same uh, idea that the word blessing uh, gives. This ashre that I mentioned before with which this Psalm 1 begins. It gives joy. It gives pleasure. The third thing that it says about the righteous man is that he sits not in the seat of the scornful. The scornful, those that criticize. Um, the unrighteous, they criticize the people of God. They love to criticize the people of God and the things of God. The righteous will not sit in that seat. On the contrary, he is proud to follow Jesus. He wears his multicolored coat, as we spoke about the past weeks, as much as he can. Let's move on to verse 2. There it speaks about what the righteous man does do. And, uh, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate, day and night. Again, it says two things. First, his delight is in the law. The law being the word, God's instructions. The word delight speaks again of this happiness. This is the blessing that the psalm begins with. Ashre. If you delight in something, no one needs to push you to do it. You will do it all by yourself. So you can actually measure your delight in the word of God by how much you hunger for it. And how much you are into it. Then it says about the righteous man. He meditates his law by day and night. The righteous man does not just hear the word. 
and then maybe even forgets about it. No, he thinks about it. He meditates on it. And not just every now and then, but day and night. And Joshua uh, writes the same, says the same in Joshua 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. So here you have it, meditate day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. In other words, then you are blessed. Now, we are not talking about Eastern meditation here, um, because the goal of Eastern meditation is to empty the mind. To empty the mind. And that is actually very dangerous, because an empty mind can be open to deception and uh, even uh, to demonic spirits. That is why Paul uh, speaks so often about being sober, sober-minded. Um, biblical meditation is the opposite of Eastern meditation, the meditation of the world. Biblical meditation is to fill your mind with the word of God, to carefully think about each word and phrase, the meaning of it, what God is saying with it. It's not just a reading, but it is feeding on it. It's digesting. So you could say in a funny way that the righteous man has the word of God on his mind only two times uh, a day, two times in his life, namely day and night, in other words, all the time. All the time. Verse 3, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that, he brings, uh, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water. That's the first of three things that are mentioned here. The best place for a tree is by a river of water, because it is always getting what it needs. And we are constantly needy, so we must stand near the river of water, the river of living water even. So that's the place of the righteous man. He is so near to the living water, he is fed continuously. The second thing that it then says about that is that he brings forth fruit in its season. That fruit is the fruit of the Spirit that we can read about in Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. The fruit by which he is known, as Jesus says in Matthew 7. And that fruit comes naturally because he stands near a river. If we, stand, if, if we stand near the river of life, which is Jesus, then we will bring forth fruit. Jesus makes us also clear in John 15 verse 5. He says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If we abide in Jesus, if we feed on this river of living water, we bring forth much fruit. Now, if we read this verse 3 of Psalm 1, we see that it speaks about a season of fr for fruit. So that means it's not, there's no need for us to be discouraged when fruit is not immediately evident. That just means it's not a season. It may mean that it's not a season. It can, of course, have other causes, but um, we should persist and wait for the right season. And thirdly, it says there that his leaves shall not wither. Brown, dead, withered leaves are signs of death and dryness. The righteous man does not have signs of death and dryness. His leaves are green and alive. Jeremiah describes the righteous man with the same metaphor. In chapter 17, verses 7 and 8, he says, Blessed, he is the same word again, Asher, 
happy, eh? content. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Exact same picture. The righteous man has eternal life because he feeds on the river of life. The living water, Jesus. It is this what got Adam and Eve separated from this living water uh, through their sin. If we read in Genesis 2, in verse 9 and 10, it says there, And out of the ground may the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge uh, of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. And then in verse uh, in, in chapter 3, so after the sin, we read the following in verse 22. And the Lord God has said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and takes also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever, therefore the Lord sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. Man got separated from the tree of life that was feeding from this, this river, standing by this river. And the cause was sin. And this paradise lost, as you can call it, is regained in Jesus, as we just read in John 15. And it will ultimately be restored in the new heaven, in the new earth and the new Jerusalem. It's an interesting thing. Uh, I pointed this also out when we went through the book of Revelation, that this tree of life is mentioned in the first book of our Bible, the uh, Genesis, what we just read. And then again in the last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22. And in both cases, it is standing at a river. In Revelation 22, verse 1 and 2, it says, And he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations." So notice again that the tree of life, both in Genesis and in Revelation, stands at a river. And in Revelation, uh, it's called the river of life, um, which is proceeding from the throne. Huh? And um, we also have to see that the, or note that the tree in the New Jerusalem has fruit in every season, not only in, in a season, but in every, every month. Um, it does not have any fruitless season, therefore. Back to Psalm 1, verse 3, the, th the fourth thing that it says there uh, is that whatever the righteous man does shall prosper. Now, this is not a promotion of a prosperity gospel. Uh, it's not about that. Uh, it doesn't mean that there are no setbacks, that there are no failures, that there are no difficulties. But it does mean that in the life of the righteous man, God brings forth something good and wonderful out of everything. In um, Romans 8, verse 28, Paul writes, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So that's the first half of Psalm 1, speaks about the righteous man. Then it's going gonna, it's gonna to contrast that with the way of the ungodly. Uh, verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. It's, it tells us uh, about the dangerous position of the ungodly. And it says two things. First of all, he is not so 
which means everything we just read about the righteous man, about the godly man, does not apply to the ungodly. He is not so. It may seem so. It may seem that they have all these things. Uh, and we may be deceived and even be discouraged by that. Uh, this happened also to David. Uh, he saw the unrighteous and uh, he was wondering, why am I bothering to, uh, to keep God's law to be, uh, to be righteous when they prosper um, even more, maybe. In Psalm 73, it speaks about that. Um, in verse uh, 12 through 16, it says, Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. However, the next statement takes it all away. In Psalm 1, verse 4, second half, it says they are like chaff in the wind. Now the chaff is the light shell around a kernel of grain. And it is so light that it can be separated from the grain by throwing the grain in the air. You may have seen these, uh, these images where uh, traditionally this is done. The grain is just thrown up in the air and the wind blows away the chaff from it. And uh, yeah, so, so light it is. It is actually without substance um, and is easily carried away. And that is also what David finds out about the ungodly. Uh, it continues in Psalm 73. He says, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Surely thou didst send them in slippery places, thou castest them down into destruction, how they are brought into desolation, as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terrors. And it's interesting to see that David did not find this out uh, when he observed them, when he observed their end. He found this out when he went into the sanctuary of God. We should see God always. When we are in doubt, seek the Lord. He will uh, answer you. Then um, verse 5 of uh, Psalm 1. It says there, Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. He speaks of the future of the ungodly here. And he says they shall not be able to stand in the day of judgment. Why? Because they are like chaff in the wind. They have no weight, no substance. They also have no fruit. Unlike the righteous, the ungodly, they will wither. They will wither. And they will also not be part of the congregation of the righteous, it says. And an interesting thing is that the, the wording here in Psalm 1 changes from ungodly to sinners. The ungodly are sinners. We found actually also in verse 1. They are sinners. And if sinners remain sinners, then there is no place for them in the congregation of the righteous. Not now and not in a glorious heavenly future that awaits. And, uh, um, and then uh, we have verse 6 of um, Psalm 1, which gives us a summary of, uh, of the lesson that the psalm teaches us. Um, it says there, For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Again, two things. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. He knows the righteous can live in peace. Even though they may have, uh, may be plagued, may uh, find trouble in the world, they can still live in peace because the loving Father in heaven knows their way. He's in control. You can say he's got their backs. 
And the original language puts it in a continuous sense. It says, it says actually the Lord is knowing the way of the righteous. He is constantly looking on their way. And the way of the ungodly shall perish. That's the second thing mentioned in verse 6. May not seem so, like like David was in doubt, as he words it in Psalm 73 that we read, it may seem that they prosper. The broad way may seem comfortable and good, but it leads to death. Proverbs 14 verse 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And Jesus said the same, Matthew 7 verse 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. It leads to destruction. And many there be which go thereat. There are only two paths in life. And this psalm lays out where they lead. It's both a warning, a warning and an encouragement. The choice which path to go is up to each one of us. Psalm 37 verses 1 through 3 say, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good, and thou shalt, and shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Amen.